I'm going to be taking some miners, uh, specifically the Alpha Pex DG1 Dogecoin miners that do not work in immersion fluid. Uh, unfortunately, I have found out. We're taking those out of the fog hashing C6, which has been an incredible unit to install and use thus far, but I've only been able to use it at 50% capacity because I put three DG1s in it. All of them suck, all of them do not work. Uh, so I have an Antminer KS3, a Casper miner behind me. That will be getting dunked as replacements for removing these DG1s. I've got a whole video on how to prep your miners for immersion, uh, but the quick crash course is we're going to pop the hood off. We're going to put fan spoofers on this because we don't have aftermarket firmware to tell this miner uh, that basically it's running in liquid. We're going to pop the front fans off. Uh, and also the rear fans off and uh, that's pretty much it. We'll put the nifty little fog hashing handles on it uh, to easily put it in there as well. All right, so I got that miner prepped. As you saw, we'll come in here. I gave these DG1s one last opportunity to start mining. Uh, and, and if we see 46 amps, which we do, they're not mining. Pieces of crap. Uh, so, Let's go ahead and shut this down. We're gonna shut the whole unit down. I am gonna leave the dry cooler running and the pump running for now, uh, for the main reason I'm just cooling it down uh, because as it stands, it's 44 Celsius in there, which is pretty warm. Uh, I can definitely operate within those temperatures, but I'd rather, see it's already dropped a degree there with the miners off. That lower power cable powers the pump in the immersion unit and then there's another power cable coming in from the outside uh, that actually powers the dry cooler which you can see the dry cooler is running right here consuming only 1200 watts uh, compared to its competitor it consumes significantly more electricity uh, the competitor consumes about double the electric for similar performance you want to earn passive income mining cryptocurrencies roger roger <laughs> i thought so me too, but really the first step is actually getting one of those mining rigs. That's where Coin Mining Central comes into play. They've been helping us source miners for years now. And you can save money on your order by punching in the code BOSSCOIN. Use our link down in the video description below. Let's run through how to undunk a miner. These miners have been sitting in dielectric fluid, which is electric safe, so miners can operate under liquid. It's super cool, but it's super slimy, and it needs to be removed if we're going to convert these back to air-cooled miners. First, we take off the lid of the immersion system and disconnect all of the ethernet and power cables from the miners so we can remove the miners to prep for cleaning. It's so hot in here. It's 103 degrees. Uh, and we just cut two more intake vents in, but I, I need more exhaust, so I'm, I'm just not moving enough air. Uh, so, pulled another miner out, got it in the tub, took the handles off. I have submerged the KS3 with, of course, the fan spoofer installed on it. I have the other DG1 that you saw me pull out, I think, before this camera overheated out uh, here in this container. These are just those $10 containers you get from Home Depot. These things are great, right? Because they're thick enough plastic to work and, and be safe enough, uh, not leak. And uh, you know, for 10 bucks, I can get a couple miners. But yeah, here's the lid. I got the red kind. I have more red stuff, Team Milwaukee. With the lid, I'm just gonna put one miner in each tub. I've got my truck out here on the farm today. I decided in here, got the cover, which I need to lock. Secured. Uh, one thing of note, it's kind of obscure info in a way, but the DG1s have different fans. It's easy to recognize them with this little wire shroud they have. It's also weird is these some Home Depot containers I have have different uh, bottoms on some of them. But yeah this uh this sucks. I pour and sweat panicking trying to make sure I don't drip into the tank. Cheers.
I've got three DG1s. Oh, D stands for damn. Got three of these damn DG1s out of the immersion tank. I've got an Ant Miner KS3 installed. I have an Ant Miner K7 installed. And now I need to go grab another Ant Miner K7 off the rack. And then I just need to get that prepped for immersion. A lot of prep goes into getting a miner ready for immersion. We flash the miners with an aftermarket firmware like Brains to put the miner in immersion mode, or we use fan spoofers. Then we remove the fans, clean the miner, and with immersion systems like fog hashing, we install little handles. Some miners require fan spoofers to trick the miner into thinking fans are running when they're not. Tag team cleaning these things up. All right, so I'm leaning on the incredible guys at BMA, Dennis, Colby, seeing what the immersion installs. They've got uh, a great solvent to clean immersion fluid off and out of miners. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and tackle that. Got my handy dandy HDX containers. Let's get to scrubbing. So next we'll unload all the miners and prep for cleaning. Here we use a dielectric solvent. We have to unplug all the connections and pieces in the miner, including the hash boards and power supply. After everything's unbolted, we'll dunk each component into the solvent to remove the slimy dielectric fluid. After a few minutes, we'll shake the excess and store it on a rack to let them dry. We'll do this for all of the hash boards. Once the hash boards are clean, we'll clean the power supply. We'll dunk both sides a couple of times just to make sure there's no dielectric fluid left. Shake off the excess and move it to a drying rack. After the hash boards and the power supply are done, we'll clean the surface of the miner with shop towels and some solvent. We'll do this on the inside, the outside, and the control board just to make sure we got all the fluid off. While we're doing this, the power supply and hash boards have dried, so we'll go ahead and put the hash boards in to make sure they're properly connected, and then we'll do the power supply. Now that everything's connected, we just want to test to make sure the miner is working. So we'll wait for the little LEDs to come on, and after a few minutes, we should see a green light. Now the miner is clean and mining and back in air mode. Back at the farm. So, it's been a long day after another long day, but I don't want to complain at all, especially when BMA just helped me speed run getting these things cleaned up. I also just went to Godoba and ate this giant burrito. And it was nice to get guac on my in my burrito with no upcharge. So f yeah. Get to Del Taco. They got a new thing called free free, free shavakadu. I got two of the miners in one of these tubs, and then I've got one sitting in here on the lid. A few moments later. All right, we are up to 71 amps, up from 46. Two miners are looking good, but one has a fault. It's gonna be miner in position six. Just gonna go ahead and try to restart that and see what happens. We're at 71 amps now. I mean, that's like a quick crash course on Duncan, I guess, when it comes to you know, immersing miners. I need to let that thing fire up for a second. We'll walk outside. For somehow it's cooler out here than it is in there. Walk over here in the shade where it's quieter. The reason you immerse miners, right? Why? Well, it's because you're given the ability to modify their cooling beyond the fan's maximum speeds, right? What is, what is cooling those miners? It's this. It's a dry cooler. And it's a big dry cooler. I can feel the flow of these dry coolers all the way over here. 
These fans are big, direct drive, powerful, spinning fast. It's a lot of cooling capabilities. So you can enhance your cooling capabilities. They run nearly silent. You do have to you know, do something with this dry cooler that does make noise, but nothing out of the ordinary. Can you drop a air-cooled mining shed in a stringent HOA neighborhood? Uh, it's gonna be tough. But you could drop immersion mining tanks there all day. I wish I could go back in time and deploy immersed miners at my old house. That would have been a great solution there. If I knew what I knew about immersion mining today, a few years ago, and some of these plug and play style options were available, it would have drastically changed what I've done through the years. I'm truly like really impressed with this fog hashing unit. The install was a breeze. I've had more trouble with the miners than I have the actual, uh, you know, immersion system, which is great. Uh, you know, minor problems are specific to the miners, but the actual hardware has been a great experience. Uh, what are some of the weird things that I have to work through out here on the Boss Queen mining farm? Uh, the immersion mining has gotten very serious, right? So we've got the C6, we've got two DCX units, we've got two more fog hashing units, which, as you can see, yeah, there's a little guy. And then we have two uh, Bix bit immersion units deployed out here. So we have seven different immersion mining systems. We also just cut in uh, two more intake vents over here. In addition to the original intake vent, we cut in down there on the bottom. What is symmetry? Nobody knows. What's tragic is how even these look on the inside, but they don't look like that on the outside at all. Jigsaw was an absolute star for cutting those in too, which was pretty fun and pretty cool. A lot of people hate on the jigsaw as a tool. It's kind of like a jack of all trades, great and nothing, but it seemed like the perfect tool for that sort of application. Uh, absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, Diablo blades, you know, just cut nice and smooth. Uh, so all that was good and a good experience. So what's next for me? I have another air-cooled uh, mining solution in the works to expand my mining par farm capabilities a bit further. I've also restored uh, some capabilities in the pod, or you know, uh, or capacity, I should say, so I can deploy some more miners uh, inside the pod now, uh, and then I'll be at absolute capacity out here unless I start doing more and more weird stuff to basically steal some juice from here and there with my meters out here on the property. Uh, but you know, looking forward building towards one megawatt solar power out here in the field, and we'll consider more hard drive slash data style server node. Uh, ways to try to earn some passive income, get our capital deployed and working for us. Uh, but definitely staying busy out here on the Vosquin mining farm. It's too hot. As Dennis kept asking uh, when him and uh, Colby BMA were over here last, did you forget to turn the AC on? Let's close down. 10 seconds of tails. Our chief AC officer, our chief air conditioning officer, you know that pup doesn't like to be hot because she is so cool. Thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe and join me on this crazy crypto journey. Uh, and I mean, I, I'm just out here having fun, trying to make good content and document uh, what works, what doesn't, the highs and lows. So, hey, I'm gonna go see if this miner's working. Hopefully it is. But with my string of luck lately, it's probably not. That is the wrong attitude. Still have a fault and I've gotta go. Project for tomorrow or later today. Yay? I'm not a big yay guy. Yay big.